What is a noble gas? Group 18 of the periodic table. Characterized by their general inertness due to their complete valence shell of electrons. What kind of glass is used in your iPhone, or other smartphone, screen? The glass in most iPhone screens to date, along with that in many other smartphones, is trademarked with the name Gorilla, R, glass. This is an alkali aluminosilicate glass that has been used in over 1 billion devices. It is lightweight, thin, and resists scratching and cracking. Significantly better than many other types of everyday glass. What is a band gap? The band gap for a material is the difference in energy between the valence band and the conduction band. This number tells you how good of a conductor a material is. The smaller the band gap, or the less energy, it takes to promote an electron from the filled to the empty orbitals. The better the material can conduct electrons. What is a substitution reaction? A chemical reaction that replaces one substituent with another. How did scientists determine that atoms consist of electrons, neutrons, and protons? Originally atoms were thought to be the smallest unit of matter. But in the late 19th century experiments allowed scientists to finally probe inside atoms. Some of these first experiments were carried out by the British physicist J. J. Thomson, who discovered the electron. He noticed that the rays, actually rays of electrons, though he didn't know it at the time, were deflected by electrically charged plates and concluded that these Rays must consist of charged particles that were much smaller than atoms themselves. Thompson's first graduate student, Ernest Rutherford, continued to investigate the nature of the atom. In the early 20th century, Rutherford carried out a now famous experiment in which radioactive particles were shot through extremely thin gold foil while some bounced off of the nuclei in different directions. Most of the particles actually passed through the foil undeflected. Rutherford interpreted this as an indication that the atoms making up the foil must consist of mostly empty space. Over his career, he developed the picture of the atom as a positively charged center surrounded by electrons. And he also proposed that there must be neutral particles. Neutrons, to explain the different isotopes of a given element.
Why do Diet Coke, R, and Mentos, R, fizz like that? In Diet Coke, R, and all soda, there are a lot of CO2 molecules trapped in solution. The slow release of CO2 from solution is what normally makes the calm bubbling in soda. Why did Richard F. Heck, United States, Eiichi Negishi, Japan, and Akira Suzuki, Japan, win the Nobel Prize for Chemistry? For palladium catalyzed cross couplings in organic synthesis. Heck, Negishi, and Suzuki shared this prize for their development of a class of reactions called palladium catalyzed cross couplings. These reactions are a powerful tool in organic synthesis, allowing chemists to form carbon carbon bonds which is generally not an easy task at all. The reaction is accomplished by having the carbon atoms first join to a common palladium center, from which point carbon-carbon bond formation can proceed. Why is graphite so good to write with? Graphite is an attractive chemical for writing for a few reasons. Graphite, unlike most inks, is not dissolved by water or affected by moisture, but it's easy to erase. Fun fact, we commonly refer to the graphite in pencils as pencil lead, but there's no lead, PB, in there. The Romans did use lead for writing, but the practice didn't make it much farther in history than that. The paint on the outside of pencils did, however, contain lead up through the 1900s. What is the Henderson-Hasselbatch equation? Equation for pH of a solution as a function of acid strength, pKa, pH equals pKa plus log 10, A dash slash ha. What analytical techniques are used in quality control for pharmaceuticals? Some of the most commonly used analytical techniques in pharmaceutical quality control include infrared spectroscopy, UV slash visible spectrophotometry, melting point determination, reactions based on color changes, and various types of chromatography, including thin layer chromatography, high performance liquid chromatography, and gas chromatography. What is the London dispersion force? A weak repulsive interaction between molecules resulting from interactions of electron clouds. What's the difference between alchemy and chemistry?
let's ask Robert Boyle, who in 1661 published The Septical Chemist. Arguing that experiments disproved the idea that the universe was composed solely of Aristotle's four elements. Boyle himself was an alchemist, in that he believed that one metal could be changed into another. But he was a staunch promoter of the scientific method and helped elevate chemistry to a science. So one could simply say that alchemy is a philosophy, while chemistry is a science. How do mood rings work? Mood rings change color based on your body temperature. The piece that changes color is a liquid crystal thermometer, which is the same technology that is used. In some disposable medical thermometers as well as the adhesive thermometers commonly used in aquariums. Why did Otto Wallach, Germany, win the Nobel Prize for Chemistry? for his services to organic chemistry and the chemical industry. By his pioneer work in the field of alicyclic compounds. Alicyclic compounds are aliphatic, meaning they have no aromatic rings. And cyclic, meaning they do have other rings. Cyclohexane is a simple example of an alicyclic compound. Wallach specifically studied terp NS, which are found in the essential oils of various plants. He was able through chemical transformation to make these liquid molecules into crystalline solids. Which made them easier to study with the methods available at the time. Wallach is also known for a number of different organic reactions that all still bear his name today. Wallach rearrangement, Wallach's rule, Wallach degradation, Lukert Wallach reaction. How is recycled plastic used to make fleece? Fleece can be made from polyethylene terephthalate, PET, bottles. The first step is to wash and then mechanically crush the bottles, shaping the plastic into small chips. The chips can then be heated and forced through tiny holes in a metal plate. Called a spinneret, which forms fibers that harden as they cool to room temperature. These fibers are wound onto a spool as they are formed. And they can subsequently be stretched to improve their strength. Machines can then be used to texturize and cut the fibers to their desired length and be used to make fleece cloth for clothing, blankets, etc. What is an electron? The electron is a negatively charged subatomic particle, and it is one of three main subatomic particles. The others being the proton and the neutron. That make up atoms. Electrons are responsible for bonding atoms together to make molecules. And they are also the carriers of electric charges in the conducting materials found in the electronic devices you use every day. 
while protons and neutrons are both found in the center, or nucleus, of an atom. Electrons are located apart from the nucleus and are best described as a cloud of electron density. Most reactions in chemistry deal with changes to the arrangement of electrons in some form. How does a microscope work? A microscope is all about lenses. The lens near the sample you're looking at is called the objective lens. And this lens is responsible for collecting the light from the sample and focusing it. Typically there will be a light under or behind the sample that provides the light used to view the sample. At the other end is another lens called the ocular lens, and the total magnification of the microscope is determined by multiplying the magnification of the objective lens by that provided by the ocular lens. The apparatus we typically think of when we think of a microscope is essentially just a big framework used to hold the lenses. The sample, and perhaps other optical devices used to improve the image of the sample. What is an Ernst equation? An equation describing the potential of an electrochemical half cell. What is an ideal gas? An ideal gas is a collection of atoms or molecules that do not interact with one another and occupy essentially no volume. While this is an idealized model, it turns out to describe many gases very well. The reason it works so well is that the atoms or molecules making up a gas are spread out far from one. Another so that the intermolecular forces between them are extremely weak, they don't feel each other. This description leads to the ideal gas law, which is a relationship between the pressure, volume, and temperature of a gas. The ideal gas law allows chemists to predict how, for example, the volume of a gas will change as its temperature is increased. The equation for the ideal gas law is PV equals NKBT where P is pressure. V is volume, N is the number of particles, atoms or molecules, T is temperature. And KB is Boltzmann's constant, a fundamental physical constant. What is an example of an alternative green reagent? In a similar spirit to alternative solvents, alternative reagents are relatively environmentally benign reagents that are used to replace more toxic ones. One example of an alternative green reagent is dimethyl carbonate, which can be used to affect methylation and carbonylation reactions. Traditionally phosgene or methyl iodide have been used to carry out this same reaction. But the drawback is that these reagents are significantly more toxic and are thus also more costly to dispose of properly. 
Dimethyl carbonate is a non-toxic compound and it can be readily produced via an oxidative reaction of methanol with oxygen. Thus avoiding any environmentally hazardous synthetic procedures. Why did Eduard Buchner, Germany, win the Nobel Prize for Chemistry? For his biochemical researches and his discovery of cell-free fermentation. Buchner ground up dry yeast cells, quartz and a form of silica known as diatomaceous earth, to release the contents of the yeast cells. He then filtered the solution and added sugar. Buchner observed that fermentation of the sugar still occurred in the absence of the whole yeast cells. What gives rise to magnetism? The type of magnetism you're most familiar with. The kind that keeps magnets on your fridge, is technically known as ferromagnetism. Ferromagnets are permanent magnets they generate their own magnetic field. Ferromagnets have unpaired electrons, so from the information in the previous question we can say that ferromagnets are paramagnetic, not diamagnetic. But ferromagnets have one additional key trait the unpaired electron spins are all aligned in the same direction, which generates a permanent magnetic field. Let's go through this again from the beginning, electrons have spin, a quantum mechanical property. But we don't need to go that far back, and this spin generates a very, very tiny magnetic field. If all the electrons in a substance are paired, it is diamagnetic. If there are unpaired electrons, the substance is paramagnetic. If there are unpaired electrons and those unpaired electrons are aligned so that there is a net spin for the macroscopic substance, it is a ferromagnetic. Ferromagnets are the magnets you know they stick to your fridge. What is a pyrophoric reagent? Pyrophoric reagents are substances that will ignite spontaneously when exposed to air. Very often, this is due to a reaction with the water in the air. Thus pyrophoric reagents should be used only under inert atmospheres. Such as in a glove box filled with an inert gas such as argon or nitrogen. Often, Pyrophorics will be sold as solutions already dissolved in a solvent so that they do not tend to create fires so easily. Some of the more mild pyrophoric substances can be handled in the air. But caution needs to be exercised to flush air out of the container before storing them for an extended period of time. They also must be disposed of with caution, or they might accidentally set the waste bucket on fire. Perhaps not surprisingly, pyrophoric materials can be useful for starting fires in a controlled manner. Pyrophoric materials are present in the spark generating mechanisms in lighters and some firearms.
Does eating turkey make you sleepy? You've probably heard that turkey contains a lot of tryptophan, which makes you sleepy. It's true there is tryptophan in turkey, but not more than is contained in most meats. It's also true that tryptophan is used to make serotonin, a neurotransmitter that makes humans sleepy. The problem with connecting these dots, I'm sleepy after Thanksgiving and tryptophan makes serotonin. Which makes me sleepy, is that there are also a bunch of other amino acids in turkey. For amino acids to get into your brain, they need to use transporters to cross the barrier. Tryptophan is competing for a ride on the transporter molecules. With all of those other amino acids you just stuffed in your face. What makes oil more slippery than water? The purpose of lubricants, like motor oil, is to reduce the friction between surfaces. So that parts last longer and less energy can be expended in the process of moving them. The key to a good lubricant is that the characteristic length scale for the formation of a thin film of. The lubricant must be much smaller than the characteristic length scale of movement in the application. Basically, oils are good lubricants because they can form very thin films that persist even when the parts they serve to lubricate are constantly in motion. This ability to form thin films typically correlates with other properties that are easier to recognize. For example, good lubricants often have a high boiling point, low freezing point. High viscosity, and are stable toward chemical oxidation and changes in temperature. Why did Karl Ziegler, Federal Republic of Germany, and Giulio Natta, Italy, win the Nobel Prize for Chemistry? For their discoveries in the field of the chemistry and technology of high polymers. These two great polymer scientists developed several classes of polymers. While simplifying and clarifying the mechanisms of polymerization processes. Ziegler discovered titanium complexes that can catalyze olefin polymerization reactions. And Nata developed a method for the preparation of stereoregular polymers from propylene. At the time, the Nobel Committee recognized that the full implications of their work were likely not yet realized. And indeed polymer chemistry was still a relatively young field at that date. Today the work of Ziegler and Nata underpins the technology. Used to generate many of the plastics you encounter. What is a breeder reactor? A breeder reactor is a type of nuclear reactor that is capable of generating fissile material. Material that can sustain a chain fission reaction, faster than it uses it up. This is accomplished by using the neutrons given off in the fission reaction to generate additional isotopes capable of fusion. 
Typically this involves the use of either thorium to generate fissile uranium or uranium to generate fissile plutonium. Why did Frederick Soddy, United Kingdom, win the Nobel Prize for Chemistry? For his contributions to our knowledge of the chemistry of radioactive substances. And his investigations into the origin and nature of isotopes. Soddy an English chemist, correctly explained that radioactivity of elements was due to their transmutation or the changing of one element into another. Specifically, he demonstrated that uranium changes into radium. He also revealed the difference between alpha emission, loss of a helium nucleus. So atomic number decreases by 2, and beta emission, electron emission from the nucleus, so atomic number increases by 1. Finally, the Saudi demonstrated that radioactive elements can have more than one atomic weight. And the idea of isotopes was born. Why did Fritz Pragel, Austria, win the Nobel Prize for Chemistry? For his invention of the method of microanalysis of organic substances. Pragel, a chemist and physician was awarded the prize for his work on ways to quantitatively characterize organic molecules. In particular, he made great improvements to elemental analysis, which reveals the amount of various elements in a substance by measuring the combustion products. Or, more simply, burn the stuff and see how much CO2, H2O, and NO are released. How does your liver process alcohol? The liver contains an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase, which is responsible for metabolizing ethanol. Alcohol dehydrogenase converts the ethanol to another molecule called acetaldehyde which is then excreted from the body. A healthy liver can process about half an ounce of pure ethanol each hour, which equates to roughly one beer, one glass of wine, or an ounce of liquor each hour. What is a biochemical pathway? A biochemical pathway is a cycle of chemical processes that mutually interact to affect some purpose important for biological function. What is an unsaturated compound? A molecule with at least one pi bond or ring structure. What is a calorimeter?
a tool used to measure the heat change associated with a chemical reaction. How do space probes, like the Curiosity rover, look for molecules on the Moon or Mars? The Curiosity rover has a whole suite of chemistry tools on board. The laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy. LIBS, tool is probably the coolest. This instrument. Breaks down rocks and bits of soil by firing a, freaking, laser at the target. The elements that made up that rock are then detected by atomic emission spectroscopy. Curiosity also contains an alpha particle, He2 plus ion, X-ray spectrometer. APXS, which is also used to measure what elements make up a sample. If the NASA scientists want to know more than just what elements make up a sample, they can use the quadruple mass spectrometer, which can measure the mass of ions of gases and organic compounds. What is a congener? A polymer of two or more monomers. What is chromatography? Chromatography describes a series of techniques used. For separating the components of a mixture of chemicals. The most common type of chromatography is column chromatography. This involves dissolving the mixture to be separated into a solution and flowing it over a column. Of stationary material that interacts to a different extent with each component of the mixture. As the liquid flows over the stationary phase, the components that interact most strongly will be held behind longer while those that interact weakly will be eluded. From the column first, the liquid is collected into a series of small vials or test tubes, which will, hopefully, each only contain one component of the mixture. The solvent can then be evaporated from each vial to recover the individual components of the mixture. A wide variety of chromatographic techniques exist. And each generally follows the same basic principles as the column chromatography described here. Why do onions make you cry? Sulfonylpropene is the main tear inducing compound. Technical term, lacrimator, released when you slice onions. The most interesting part of this story is that this chemical is not present in onions before you slice them. In fact, the generation of this tear-inducing molecule is not a mistake. But part of the defense system that plants have developed to deter animals from continuing to eat them. When you cut, or an animal takes a bite of, an onion, an enzyme, a lyonnaise. That is normally safely stored within the plant cells is released and starts to wreak havoc. 
Alliance converts sulfoxides to sulfonyl groups, which makes you cry like a baby. How much space does the nucleus take up? The nucleus of an atom takes up a very, very small fraction of the total space occupied by the atom. The diameter of a nucleus is on the order of 100,000 times smaller than that of a whole atom. Is it possible to split an atom? It is possible to split an atom. When people refer to splitting an atom, it's the nucleus of the atom that is being split. One process that splits the nucleus of an atom is called fission. Which can happen spontaneously in heavier elements. Spontaneous fission basically involves a nucleus emitting. A particle containing one or more protons or neutrons. One of the most commonly emitted particles is called an alpha particle. Which consists of two neutrons and two protons. Whenever the number of protons in a nucleus changes, it becomes a different element. Nuclei can also be split intentionally in laboratories. The nucleus is held together very tightly. So it usually takes a high energy particle colliding with an atom to break it apart. Typically a high energy neutron is used to initiate the process of splitting a nucleus. This process results in an overall release of energy so that once one nucleus is split, its products can cause the reaction to happen again. This is called a chain reaction, and it can be used to produce energy in a nuclear reactor. If it happens somewhat slowly, or an explosion, if it happens quickly. What is density? Mass per unit volume of a given substance. Why is chemistry the central science? Chemistry is called the central science because it's related to everything. It connects and draws from topics in biology, physics, material science, mathematics, engineering, and other fields. Chemistry is important to how our body functions, to the food we eat, to how our medicines work, and to pretty much everything else in our lives. After reading this book, we hope you'll agree. What is Saran, R, Rap? Saran, R, Rap is a trade name, another held by the Dow Chemical Company, for polyvinylidene chloride. If two of the hydrogen atoms on every other carbon in polyethylene are replaced by chlorine atoms. Note yet again that this is not how this material is actually made. 
you get PVDC, or polyvinylidene chloride. It was discovered by accident in 1933 by Ralph Wiley. Who was having trouble washing this strange material out of the bottom of a piece of glassware? The actual polymer they were trying to make was poly, perchloroethylene. Where every hydrogen is replaced by a chlorine atom. It was just before World War II that a breakthrough was made that allowed the scientists to make film from this new material. It was quickly adopted by the army to wrap equipment being transported by sea in order to prevent corrosion from salt water and other applications to keep soldiers dry in jungle environments. After World War II, Dow found a new use for the material and introduced a PVDC film product for wrapping food called Saran, R, Wrap. The clingy food wrap you buy today is not PVDC, however. This material was phased out due to environmental and health concerns of those chlorine atoms. And lodensidy polyethylene took its place. Okay, but why was PVDC ever called Saran, R, Wrap? Many industrial trade names have no interesting story behind the creation. Saran, R. Rap is an exception. You might think that Ralph Wiley was responsible for naming this material. Having discovered it? Nope. Ralph Wiley's boss, John Riley, named the material after his wife and daughter Sarah and Anne. What is ortho? Term used to describe two substituents on an aromatic ring that are bonded to adjacent positions. What is astrochemistry? Astrochemistry is chemistry in space. Astrochemists try to do what all chemists do study molecules and the reactions. Of those molecules except that these chemists are looking in outer space. Where temperatures are extremely cold and concentrations are exceptionally dilute. These two properties of outer space combined mean that lots of very strange molecules can exist for a relatively long time. Why would anyone add carbon monoxide to tuna? Cutting a tuna fish exposes many muscle cells to oxygen. Which slowly changes the bright red color of fresh tuna steaks to a darker brown. This is the result of iron containing enzymes. Myoglobin and hemoglobin, being oxidized from Fe, 2, to Fe, 3. Susi lovers have come to understand that fresh raw tuna should be bright red and are skeptical of eating any brown colored fish. The seafood industry figured out at some point that adding co during the packaging step not only slows the rate of oxidation down, which increases shelf life, but also brightens the red color. It does this because co binds more strongly to the Fe, 2, center than Fe, 
3. The risk to consumers is not co-exposure here, but that you might be fooled into eating fish. That isn't as fresh as you might otherwise think if you judge its freshness based on color. What is an unimolecular reaction? A reaction that takes place involving only a single reactant molecule. There can be one or more product molecules formed. What is an alloy? A mixture of metals, E. G. Bronze, a mixture of zinc and copper. What is a calorie? A calorie is a unit of heat energy defined as the amount of energy it takes to raise one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Calories are also often used to describe the energy content of foods. When used for foods, a calorie actually refers to 1000 calories. Or a kilocalorie of energy which can be rather confusing. What is chromatography? Chromatography is a method for separating chemical compounds. Based on chemical properties as they travel over a distance. The sample to be separated may be in a solution or in the gas phase. Why would a chemist want to measure conductivity? Most practical applications of solution conductivity. Measurements involve determining the quality of water samples. Conductivity measurements can provide a measure of the total amount of dissolved solids in a water sample. This information can be put to use in different ways, depending on the context but in general it provides a measurement of the purity of the water. Chemists sometimes use a method called ion chromatography, which is a type of liquid chromatography, LC. Ion chromatography often uses a detector that measures conductivity. To detect when different analytes pass through the detector. Is melting a chemical reaction? No, melting is not a chemical reaction. Melting is a change between phases of matter. And it does not involve the breaking or formation of any new chemical bonds. As the temperature increases to cause a substance to melt. The arrangement of the molecules in the solid slash liquid changes, but no chemical reaction takes place.
The same is true for liquid to gas phase changes as well as for the reverse processes. Freezing and condensing What is a bond enthalpy? Bond enthalpy refers to the amount of energy it takes to break a chemical bond. This tells us how favorable a chemical bond is relative to the separation of the two fragments on either side of the bond. How can the presence of blood be detected by forensic experts? An ultraviolet light source can be used to detect a blood stain that has been cleaned up. It's also possible to use a chemical substance like luminol or phenolphthalein to detect the presence of hemoglobin. Revealing its presence even after the visible stain has been washed away. What is the structure of DNA? DNA is well known for its double helical structure. Two scientists named James Watson and Francis Crick first discovered this structure in 1953 using data from X-ray diffraction experiments. The two strands of the helix are held together by hydrogen bonding as well. As stacking interactions between the aromatic rings of the nitrogenous bases. These strong interactions make the double helical structure very stable. It's also true, however, that the double helical structure has to be temporarily pulled apart when it's time to transcribe the DNA into RNA. This is accomplished by an enzyme called helicase. What was the law of octaves? The law of octaves was put forth by the British chemist John Newlands. He noticed that, when the elements were listed in order of increasing atomic weight, elements with similar properties occurred every eight elements. The trend was named the law of octaves by analogy to musical scales. And it was the first realization of the relationship between atomic masses and a repeating pattern of elemental properties. This periodicity has since been explained in detail as chemists have gained. A better understanding of atomic structure. And the law of octaves played a crucial role in the development of the periodic table chemists use today. Can molecules have any arbitrary energy? No, molecules actually have a discrete number of possible energy levels. Another way to say this is that their energies are quantized. To illustrate why this is so different from situations we're used to in everyday life. Consider what happens when you're throwing a baseball. 
you could throw it at any speed between 0 meters per second. M slash S, and however fast you are capable of throwing it. In molecules, though, only a discrete set of energies are possible. It's as if you could throw the baseball either 2M slash S or 40M slash S. But not 20M slash S or any other speed in between. There aren't many situations we encounter in everyday life in which the possible energies associated with objects come in a discrete set of values. What is echinacea? Echinacea is a group of flowers, related to daisies, sometimes also called cone flowers. Different members of this group are used in herbal medicines to stimulate the body's immune system. Scientific studies on the effectiveness of echinacea are contradictory, however. As some have shown clear effects in the prevention of or shortening of the length of colds. While others have concluded that it is mostly ineffective. What is a flashpoint? Temperature at which the vapor pressure of a liquid is high enough that the vapor can be ignited. What is a thorium reactor? A thorium fuel cycle is also possible for use in nuclear power reactors. This involves using thorium-232 to generate uranium-233, which is capable of undergoing fission processes to generate energy in the form of heat. What is an ohm? Zero, the SI unit used to describe electrical resistance. What is beta particle? An electron created during nuclear decay reactions. Why did Arthur Hardin, United Kingdom, win the Nobel Prize for Chemistry? And Hans Karl August Simon von Euler Chelpin, Germany. For their investigations on the fermentation of sugar and fermentative enzymes. Hardin and Euler Schelpin were biochemists who independently investigated fermentation processes. Hardin discovered that phosphate was required for alcohol fermentation. Euler Schelpin studied the means by which living cells produced energy by degrading sugar molecules. And the machinery that cells used to perform these reactions. How do chemists study molecules so far away?
special kinds of telescopes allow astrochemists to perform spectroscopy on the light or any type of electromagnetic radiation, not just visible light, coming from a star or other celestial body. Certain features of this radiation allow chemists to measure the quantities of different elements and the surface temperatures of objects like stars and comets. What is entropy? A measure of the disorder, or dispersion of energy, in a system. The second law of thermodynamics states that a spontaneous change cannot decrease the entropy of an isolated system. What is an alkali? A basic substance, i.e., pH 7. So how little can we detect? Thankfully, way less than that. Even in the 1990s it was possible to detect lead concentrations as low as 0.1 parts per billion. So analytical chemists are on top of keeping us safe from lead in our drinking water. As long as someone is checking on it regularly. What are the basic units of pressure? Unlike units of length and temperature, pressure is reported in at least six common units. The Pascal, abbreviated PA, is the official standard unit, but bar, millimeters of mercury, mmHg. Standard atmospheres, ATM, TOR, and pounds per square inch, psi, are all used in different areas. What is specific gravity? The ratio of a compound's density to the density of a reference material, usually water for liquids. How can I make a volcano from vinegar and baking soda? Chemistry principles encountered in this experiment, chemical reactions gases materials you'll need. Vinegar baking soda, 2 tablespoons, large bowl baking pan flour, 6 cups, cooking oil, 4 tablespoons. Salt, 2 cups, plastic bottle dishwashing soap red or orange food coloring, or any color, really. Water the procedure, this is a classic chemistry experiment that you might have done before in school. In a large bowl, first mix 6 cups of flour, 2 cups of salt, 4 tablespoons of cooking oil, and 2 cups of water. Mix these ingredients until they are firm. These ingredients are not involved in the chemical reaction that will make your volcano erupt. But rather this mixture will serve as the rock that forms the 
Structure of your volcano. Place the plastic bottle standing vertically in the pen. Use your hands to shape the rock material from the First step into a cone shape around the top of the bottle. Be careful not to cover the top of the bottle. Fill the bottle most of the way with water. Leaving enough space to add a few ounces of baking soda and vinegar. Add a few drops of dishwashing soap to the bottle. This is not part of the chemical reaction that will take place inside the bottle. But bubbles from the soap will help to catch the gas evolved during the reaction between the vinegar and baking soda. Add 2 tablespoons of baking soda into the bottle. Finally, slowly, or quickly, if you want a really crazy volcano. Add vinegar to the bottle, and prepare to witness the eruption. Be careful though you should avoid getting this mixture in your eyes. Or anyone else's, and this combination can make a spectacular mess in your kitchen. The chemical reaction takes place between the baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, or NaHCO3, and vinegar. Dilute acetic acid, or CH3CO2H, to release carbon dioxide gas, which is what causes the volcano to erupt. The relevant chemical equation is, NaHCO3 plus CH3COOH CH3COONA and CO2 plus H2O. What is the charge of a molecule? The overall charge of a molecule is determined by the number of protons and electrons in the whole molecule. If there are more protons than electrons, the molecule will possess an overall positive charge. If there are more electrons than protons, the molecule will similarly possess an overall negative charge. A molecule with the same number of electrons and protons is neutral and has no net charge. Why do some chemical reactions cause a color change? The colors we see all have to do with what wavelengths of light something absorbs or reflects. For a chemical reaction to cause a change in the color of something. All that has to happen is that the products of the reaction absorb and reflect different wavelengths of light than the reactants do. We'll discuss how light interacts with molecules in more detail in physical and theoretical chemistry. Why did Walter Cohn, United States, win the Nobel Prize for Chemistry? For his development of the density functional theory and John A. Popel, United Kingdom, for his development of computational methods in quantum chemistry. Cohn and Popel represent two of the founding fathers of modern computational chemistry methods. Density functional theory is a method that relies on the a function describing the spatial electron density in a molecule to calculate molecular properties. And Cohn was awarded the prize for his substantial contributions to the development of this now widely used approach. Popel also made major strides toward making computational 
methods reliable and accessible to a large number of chemists. In addition to his more technical achievements, Popel is responsible for developing the Gaussian computational chemistry software that is probably the most widely used computational chemistry tool available today. How are the Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin temperature scales related? The Celsius and Kelvin scales use the same size degree, incremental scaling is the technical term. But set their zero values at different absolute numbers. Let's explain that sentence a bit more, if you go up by 1 degree Celsius or 1 degree Kelvin. You've raised the temperature the same amount, but 0 degrees Celsius, the temperature at which water freezes, is 273.15 K. Thus the two scales are offset from one another by 273.15. Fahrenheit is completely different though. Water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and a change of 1 degree on the Fahrenheit scale is equal to a change of 0.55 degrees Celsius. How do thermometers work? There are actually many kinds of thermometers available. But let's talk about the two types that you probably have in your home. The first type is a glass tube filled with either alcohol or mercury. As the temperature rises the volume of the liquid also increases, so it rises up the tube. The height of the liquid is calibrated with a scale so you can read the temperature value easily. The second type is known as a bimetallic strip thermometer. While you've probably never heard this name before, you've likely used this type of thermometer. They are the most common models of thermostats, before they went digital. Used as meat thermometers, oven thermometers, and the little thermometers that you see baristas using at coffee shops when they're steaming milk for your latte. You can tell from the name bimetallic that there are two metals involved here, usually steel and copper. In order to measure temperatures, these two metals need to expand at different rates when they are heated. If you make a strip of these two metals and wind that strip up into a coil, the difference in their thermal expansion will cause the coil to wind tighter or unwind as the temperature changes. Depending on which side of the coil you place the material that expands more. This coil then turns a needle to indicate that the temperature is rising or falling. What is a supercritical fluid? Above its critical point, a given temperature and pressure combination. A substance behaves like both a liquid and a gas and is called supercritical. Supercritical fluids are very good solvents, like liquids. And as a result many modern chemical processes use them. Which energy sources are renewable?
Renewable energy sources include wind, hydroelectric, solar, biomass slash biodiesel, and geothermally derived power. What are enantiomers? Enantiomers are molecules that are chiral. In organic chemistry, if a carbon atom is bonded to four different atoms or groups of elements, then we can draw two enantiomers of the molecule. Remember that the connectivity does not change, just the arrangement of the atoms in space. Wait what do those dashed and wedged bonds mean? Up to this point we've mostly been representing molecules as flat objects. Where chemical bonds are just shown as straight lines. But molecules are not flat. In the previous question. The four halogen atoms around the central carbon form a tetrahedron. Chemists use dashed bonds to indicate that they are behind the plane of the paper. And wedged bonds come toward you, above the plane of the paper. Is it better to use chemical free products? There are no such things. Everything is made up of chemicals. Be careful when choosing which ones you eat or use, but the truth is, they're all made up of chemicals. How does sunscreen work? Sunscreens either reflect or absorb ultraviolet light from the sun. To reflect the light sunscreens contain either titanium or zinc oxides. Which are both very white solids, so all wavelengths of visible light are being reflected. To absorb light, sunscreens can contain organic chemicals that interact with harmful UV wavelengths. While almost all sunscreens use titanium and slash or zinc oxides. The particular organic compounds that are used vary widely across brands and countries. Do chemists really study food chemistry? Yes, they really do. There's even a scientific journal called Food Chemistry, published by Elsevier. Dedicated to reporting new findings regarding the chemistry and biochemistry of food and raw, food, materials. How was rayon discovered? The first artificial silk was probably prepared by a Swiss chemist, Georges Ode Mars. In 1855, Ode Mars mixed the pulp of mulberry bark, chosen likely because silkworms eat mulberry leaves and a rubber gum and used a needle to pull out long fibers of material. This was a rather labor-intensive and difficult process and could not be done in any economic way. 
Some accounts also claim that Odmars drew fibers of nitrocellulose. The product of mixing nitric acid with cellulose, in addition to being a delicate process. The resulting fibers of nitrocellulose were highly flammable. Hilaire de Chardonnay, a French engineer, was another key player in the history of artificial silk. Working with Louis Pasteur in the 1870s. The legend claims that he spilled a bottle of nitrocellulose while working in a photography darkroom. The spilled solution was left to evaporate, and Chardonnay returned later to clean up his mess. Wiping up the residue, he noticed long, thin fibers had formed. Chardonnay received a patent on this material. But again the flammability kept it from achieving large market adoption. The viscose method mentioned earlier was finally worked out in 1894 by English chemists Charles Frederick Cross, Edward John Bevan, and Clayton Beadle. This method was a commercial success, and the fabric was manufactured first by Courthold's fibers in the United Kingdom and then Avchek's fibers in the United States. What is a lipid? Lipids are a broad class of nonpolar or amphiphilic molecules including fatty acids, vitamins, sterols, and waxes, among others. An amphiphilic molecule is one that has both hydrophilic and hydrophobic groups. Meaning that some parts of the molecule interact favorably with polar groups while other parts do not. What is an isothermal process? An isothermal process is a process in which the temperature remains constant throughout the process.